Hi everyone, today I want to show you some old video from the Serra de Borocena region in Brazil. This may be the place with the clearest water in all of South America. But, like most natural places, this region is under threat, not from logging companies, but because of industrial agriculture. In the early 90s, the town of Bonito and the beautiful springs surrounding the city were still a secret location visited by Brazilian vacationers. Forward 30 years, and today millions of tourists come here from all over the world to snorkel in the rivers, explore the caves, go bird watching, or to relax in the countryside. The number of tourists also brings problems for the delicate ecosystems, but nothing like the encroaching corn and soybean fields. I wanted to show this video because for those that have been to the Aquario Natural, they may notice the changes in this habitat. The spring was off limits even then, and you could only enter it with special permission from the owners. Permission that is much more difficult to obtain today, but the spring is now much more shallow, and when I last saw it, it wasn't nearly as spectacular as it was then. In our summer of 1995, the water was around waist deep, and you could easily see from one side of the spring to the other. The big fish, which are mostly Pirapitanga, did not enter the spring, so it was largely populated by smaller fish, including Moncausia bonito, which now carries the name of this place, but was an undescribed species then. Then, as well, Serpe tetra, Astyanax, Phenacogaster, some Crinicicla editae, Steindagneria, and many other small charisons. As it does today, the spring then overflowed to form a short river that would eventually join up with the larger Rio Sucuri, several kilometers downstream. This is a more recent aerial video from 2019. Of course, there were no drones to capture this kind of footage back then. You will notice that the main river is really turbid. That happens when it rains a lot, but it is made much worse because the narrow band of marginal forest is missing along many rivers, and the muddy clay leaches into the rivers from the fields. The spring has dozens of cracks in the limestone substrate, and large amounts of water emerge, creating fountains of sand on the floor. In some places, these cracks are broad enough to push out the sand and form wide tubes with smooth walls that disappear in the darkness of caves several meters below. Narrow cracks such as these continuously fill with sand pouring into the tube to be ejected again moments later, creating these small sand volcanoes on the bottom. On firmer ground surrounding the spring, Echinodorus, Ludwigia and Hytrocotule grow in dense masses. With water so clear, the plants take the shape of their immersed forms, with the Hydrocotule creeping along the bottom with single leaves in the water column, rather than the arm-long chains it forms in water that is not clear. This spring has the look of a carefully thought out and planted Dutch aquarium, with carefully staged and staggered plants of different length. Few places in the world have this almost not natural appearance of a sculpted garden, a natural occurrence that is balanced by the water flow, fish feeding on the plants, and the available light filtered through the canopy above. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel and share our videos on social media. We appreciate your support to bring you more amazing footage of fish and habitats from around the world. If you like these videos, consider buying one of my books. Amazon Below Water and the new Shingu Below Water are available on the website. A link will be found in the description. Both Serpe Tetra and Moncausia bonita are common in the shallow water of the spring. Macroalgae and plants form dense masses with few clear territorial boundaries and males spar in the open water for the prime display sites. Both of these species are very common in the region and can be found in a variety of habitats including the black water of the Rio Salobra and deeper, faster moving water of the Rio da Prata. Check out the Serpe Tetra and Dorado video from the Rio da Prata linked in the description. As the water becomes deeper, the scape below changes. Taller plants such as giant sword plants and water lilies take over. The incredibly dense forest of giant sword plants creates a safe understory for many fish. Pairs of pike cichlids guard several hundred young in the safety of the shade. Cranicicla editae, the smaller of the two species that occurs here, prefers these complex substrates, with leaf litter and plenty of hiding places, while the larger Cranicicla vitata prefer more open water and sandy bottom. Larger fish begin to appear, and increasing numbers of large Pirapitanga and Kurimba nervously navigate the shallow space between the purling tips of the Echinodorus leaves and the surface. 
Fastened photosynthesis of these plants produced strands of oxygen bubbles that constantly adhere to the dome port of the camera and make filming extremely difficult. Swimming over the top of this forest of sword plants with the bright red serpe tetras below remains one of the most impressive sights in South America. And it is no surprise that this region has become famous not only in Brazil but worldwide. Farther downstream, the Echinodorus forest starts to recede to the margins and introduced Potamogeton, better adapted to growing in the deep water, starts to appear in thick masses, eventually covering the river bottom. Marginal plants and reeds grow in thick mats on the edges of the river. The banks of the river are not well defined and the mix of marginal plants growing in the water may extend for many meters before reaching the edge where the roots of trees form a hardened riverbank. Where the clay-like substrate is exposed, hypostomas have dug out their tunnel caves like large seaside apartment complexes. Both hypostomus sonie and hypostomus frolichi occur here, digging their tunnels into the clay and feeding on algae growing on the substrate. Where logs or larger pieces of wood has fallen into the river, a small ancestral species occupies the finger-deep caves in the wood. The bristlenose pleco is plentiful here, and nearly every available space is occupied by the small catfish. Over time, more and more of the softer wood is removed by fish, and older logs form a lattice of narrow caves ideally suited for smaller catfish, electric fish, and the adult male bristlenoses with their tentacled heads guarding eggs or young in these caves. Visiting snorkelers are allowed to enter some meters below the spring and may miss the most spectacular sector between the spring and the dense forest of Echinodorus. Today this river seems to have changed and the spring at the top did not feature the same incredible forests of plants seen on my previous visit. But this could be due to seasonal water levels. Notably absent from this river are some of the large predators, and for some unknown reason, both the dorado and the two large Ploidoplatistoma or tiger shovelnose species seen in other habitats of the region are rarely seen here. We did make a dorado video, linked here in the description. There are, however, plenty of smaller predators, such as the wolffish, Hoplias malabaricus, Barracuda, Acestorhynchus pantanero, and the smaller wolffish, Hopli eritrinus unitiniatus. The Pirapitanga seem to feel safer under the shade of the trees, where there are fewer plants below. They often congregate under fruit trees for a curious reason. Capuchin monkeys, feeding above, drop partially eaten food to the wading school of fish below. This behavior is not intentional, but hilarious to see a band of the small monkeys harvesting fruit, biting it only once, since food is abundant, and dropping it into the water below, where hundreds of brycon compete to eat their leftovers. The Brycon schools here seem to have figured out which trees are the preferred feeding trees and seeing a large number of them usually indicated monkeys are in the branches above. In the coming months we will show you more recent videos from these habitats with some fantastic footage of breeding Farloella, the Brucon and some of the gigantic schools of fish that live in these rivers. Modern cameras finally do justice to this beautiful habitat and hopefully you'll enjoy our journey to the rivers of the Pantanal and the headwaters of the rivers feeding the gigantic wetland here in the Serra de Boroquena. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel and share our videos on social media. We appreciate your support to bring you more amazing footage of fish and habitats from around the world.